Have you ever drunk so much coffee that you're both jittery and tired at the same time? I just yawned so hard that my contact almost popped out and now my eyes are watering. It's been a fun time. You don't care. Hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Kendo here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. For those of you that don't know what Saturday is, it's when I do something called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Last week we switched it up a little bit and instead of doing my normal format, we did a little reaction style video and watched my teacher, my obsession. Ooh, who cakes up. Doing with all that bakery, hot cross buns. They're so circular. All that ass and them khaki. So if you like to see that video or check out any of the other videos that I've done thus far in this series, be sure to check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. For this week, we're back to our original format. Again, you guys are great. You're always keeping me abreast of garbage that has existed in the media over the years. But today we're looking into another sector of bad movies that I've yet to really touch on. And that is something that I've oh so artfully decided to call pretend films. Pretend films are generally films in which someone pretends to be something that they aren't. Pretending to be a different race is quite common. Shout outs to Laquisha. Occupation. And in this case, religion? Generally speaking, I don't even like to touch pretend films. Uh, it's hard to get comedy out of them and I don't actually think this video will be any different. I watched this whole movie and it was so bad that I couldn't even think of anything witty or humorous to say. And the thing about these films is that they overwhelmingly rely on nothing but low hanging stereotypes about whatever thing. If you wanna be black, you say yo, yo, yo and act real ghetto when you in a gang. If you're pretending to be gay, you do this. They are easily the cheapest form of comedy that you can make, comedy, if that's what you wanna call it. They're largely heavily, dreadfully unfunny. Today we're talking about one that came across my Twitter timeline. Y'all always keep me abreast, thank you. I'm not, I, I sound sarcastic, but thank you. Like I would, I would have lived my whole life having not watched this movie, a catastrophe. Today we're talking about a 2013 film called Jewtopia. An independent film starring an embarrassingly well-decorated cast, including, but not limited to Jennifer Love Hewitt, Tom Arnold, the mom from Bojack Horseman, and this dude whose name I don't know, but I've seen him many places. He's very funny actually. And when I saw the synopsis or the general premise of this movie, I said, oh, okay. But nothing really I could have done could have prepared me for how um, actually shockingly unfunny this movie was. I didn't even get some like groaners like, oh, I don't even want to laugh at that, but that was funny. Like I didn't even get those. <laughs> I got nothing. The film is actually an adaptation of a long running off Broadway play, I assume under the same name, by a man that sounds Jewish. His last name is Fogel. Which brings me to the point of like, maybe I'm just being oversensitive. Maybe Jewish people find this movie hilarious. The reviews aren't sparkling, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anyone Jew or Gentile likes this movie. <laughs> Maybe I'm being a little bit too woke, a little too PC. I don't know, it's possible. But I just, I watched this film and I'm like, wow, this is offensive to everybody. <laughs> Jews, Gentiles, Mexicans, black people, little people, women. With that said, if any Jewish viewers of mine wanna watch it and like chime in on their thoughts, I'd love to hear how you internalize the film. Maybe I'm just being a little too overly sensitive. If I, I don't even think if I was Jewish, I would find this funny. Like, it's just not, it's just not funny. It's so dreadfully, painfully unfunny. What is the movie even about? <laughs> Let's start there. The movie is about a guy named Christian who decides that he wants to impersonate a Jewish man. He wants to pretend to be Jewish because he effectively has a Jewish fetish because he feels that Jewish women are overpowering and therefore he would quote, never have to make another decision again for the rest of his life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, yes. Learning to be a completely different religion without learning anything about that religion. I didn't even know you could fetishize a religion. That's a new one. I That is truly new to me. I've never, 
I've never heard of that. Especially one that does have an inherent ethnic component as well. I would like to say yes, I do understand that the movie is satire that has not escaped me. I'm not too serious and not able to take a joke. I get, I understand that this is supposed to be satire. But the, but the thing about satire, like a core element of satire, it has to be funny. Uh, and, and I get it, humor is subjective, but like, damn. <laughs> I feel like this movie requires me to do a bunch of disclaimers, so let me just get that out of the way first. I don't know much about Juda Judaism. Judaism? The extent of my knowledge about Jewishness is I took a class on trauma, which was largely focused on the Holocaust, so that's a great all-encompassing understanding of what it's like to be Jewish, of course. And two, uh, I, I played a rabbi in a, in a play in college because all the white kids were taking all the main characters. So they had to give me something. So yeah, I don't know anything about being Jewish, but I gotta say as an onlooker, I was uncomfortable to say the least. But okay, let's start with the, with the movie proper. The movie begins with a military brat Christian as a child coming into a new school. He's moved from city to city, town to town, you know, as many military children do, but he ends up befriending a weird booger eating Jewish kid named Adam. They form a swift bond that results in them sharing their respective lifestyles as Jew and Gentile. As a quick summation, Jewish people are a whiny traditional group of folks involving nothing but super hyper critical and overbearing women. They eat nothing but kefilta fish and Chinese food while simultaneously being racist towards Asians. Everyone, honestly, they're racist towards everyone. And one of the biggest components is that they do nothing but bitch. They do nothing but bitch and complain about everything. Uh, and that's it, that's Jewishness. That's being Jewish, Lahayim. While the Gentiles or the non-Jews, they do nothing but watch football and tote guns and talk about America and their wives are subservient and stupid and blonde. They don't believe in asthma and bring up the words Uncle Sam completely non-ironically into a conversation. Truly and utterly delightful. And again, the satire does not escape me. I do understand that this is supposed to be a joke. I want to reiterate that because I don't want people to be like, wow, you can't take a joke. That's not my problem. It's just not funny. But yes, these two friends continue to hang out and share quote, Jewy, things together. But eventually, being that being a military child largely means moving away often, he does eventually move away and they don't see each other for years and years afterwards. Now, while in college, Christian actually ends up starting to date a Jewish girl. All of my decisions went away. I didn't have to decide what to eat. I didn't have to decide what clothes to buy. And I definitely didn't decide who my friends were gonna be. This girl ends up breaking his heart when they're graduating because he wanted to marry her and she said, yeah, nah, you're not Jewish. So why would I, why would I marry you? Nine years since he was dumped, he pines over Jewish women. And again, I did not know that you could fetishize a religion. I always thought that <laughs> I just never, I've never heard of that. But yes, he lives the rest of his life pining over the idea of dating another Jewish girl. And so one day while he's passing a synagogue, he decides to go in for their singles mixer where they play catchy renditions of traditional Jewish hymns while Christian gives us a buttload of comedic zingers. A lot of hot Jew in here. Hey, am I right? Just uh, felt, felt my vulva fall off. <laughs> in the lobby of said mixer, he ends up seeing Jennifer Love Hewitt. I'm going to yell her name this entire movie because I just want that to sink in. A woman that we know that name, or at least I do, I recognize that name. Like there's other notable people in this movie and that is also very draining and exhausting, but Jennifer Love Hewitt. Is she even Jewish? Um, but Jennifer Love Hewitt is in it and they meet in the lobby of this mixer. They get to talking and she is the perfect amount of pushy Jewish woman that he's looking for. To run that home, they did the most shameless ad drop I've ever seen. <sighs> Five missed calls. I never even heard the phone ring. Oh, who's your provider? Penn Mobile has the least amount of coverage in LA County and the most drop calls of any network. You should switch to AT&T Nation 900 with unlimited mobile to mobile. I've never seen a more artless ad drop in my life. It was actually, maybe that was the only part that I actually laughed at. They said, who got sponsors? We got sponsors. They were proud of it, honey. Where your AT&T bag at? Christian then commences to lie about his name and says that he's actually named 
Avi Rosenberg or something like that, something very Jewish. Adi is trying to figure out how best to fool this girl into thinking that he is actually Jewish. In order to do that, he reunites with his childhood friend, Adam, after 17 years. While he's talking to Adam, he's like, yeah, I just don't wanna make another decision again in my life. I want a Jewish girlfriend to do everything for me. Teach me how to pass myself off as one of you guys. Well, why do you wanna marry a Jew so badly? Because I never wanna make another decision for as long as I live. Wow. But instead of, I don't know, learning about Judaism, converting even, he instead wants to learn the ways of the Jew, AKA buying a Volvo, complaining about everything and nothing at the same time, ordering food that you have requested everything to be supplemented on when it comes back perfectly, taking a bite of it, and sending it back. Oh, and circumcision. Yeah, basically they implement that by giving us a Jew shit montage where it's like, yeah, that's some Jew shit. Goyim, Schwitz, Vet, Nash, Puppik. You ready? I think you so. remember everything? I don't know. Let's let's take a walk with it then. Eventually, Christian and Jennifer Love Hewitt go on a date in which he implements his newfound skills. And she seems to be into it until he kind of goes OD, calling her nose, quote, the hottest little Jew beak ever. Like, I don't even know, I can't even work with this. I don't even know, I don't even have anything witty to say. Like, that's what I mean. This movie is so awful that I can't even. And then when the check arrives, he says he wants to quote, Jew him down on the check. Like, I'm not understanding what's funny about this at all. Like, don't get me wrong, all right? I wouldn't consider myself the most PC when it comes to humor. I personally am a fan of a good, ooh, I don't wanna laugh at that. I don't, I shouldn't. Oh no, bitch, I shouldn't laugh at that. I feel like we all are to some extent those type of people, but this isn't even like funny or clever at all. Oh, not to mention, I didn't even really touch on the super racist shit this movie does. It's pretty racist against all the three major food groups of races, <laughs> Latinx, Asians, black people. So him and Adam get the idea to amend everything by getting on Jennifer Love Hewitt's mom's good side because moms are the only thing that mattered in Judaism. He gets on her good side by pretending to talk to his mother and feigning concern for the increased percentage of interfaith relationships and marriages amongst Jews and Gentiles. These very few things are enough to convince, to convince her to give him another chance. So they end up going on a date again. There are some stupid scenes where they're about to have sex and he doesn't want to because he's uncircumcised. Oh, I forgot they also offended the LGBTQ. They just offended everybody. They offended everybody. What guy goes out with a girl for a whole month and doesn't want to sleep with her? I do, I want to sleep with you. I just want it to be special. Ew, that is exactly what my Aunt Judy's husband told her. She walks in on him tied up with a rubber ball gag in his mouth being sodomized by a transsexual who is dressed as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Christian gets circumcised and while under sedation, he ends up calling his father, speaks in a way that alludes to him being in a gay Jewish relationship. And that's a knee slapper as well. By the way, we're almost at the end of the movie, by the way, this feels like a short one. Christian admits that he is not Jewish and that he lied about everything. Like he lied so much. And yet the only thing he needed to do is say he loves this woman for her to say, okay even though we have no real reason to understand why he loves her, but do we ever in these movies? But this one especially, like, I don't, whatever. And then within a year, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles are together going hunting, and that's the end. You think you're confused, bitch. Wow, this, this video is gonna be over quick. I'm nowhere near done with my makeup. Like, this movie is just such a, just a cluster. It's been a while since I've watched a movie that has left me so bewildered, I guess, to the extent that I can't even really get comedy from it. Like there's nothing funny about it. I can't even make jokes about the non jokes that are in the jokes. You know what I mean? Like all I can do is just be in my head like I'm in the fucking office and look at my own particular personal camera documenting my disdain and confusion. Just going like, what the hell? Like <laughs> usually at the end of stuff like this, I try to give like a moral, especially when a movie is so obviously focused on fetishizing something, but it's like, who fetishizes Jewish people? Who? Like, I don't need to do a whole PSA about don't fetishize Jews because who the hell is fetishizing Jews? I don't know, maybe this is a problem I'm just not aware of. Like, I don't even know what to say. 
And also, beyond it being just unfunny and offensive, it's not particularly entertaining either. Like, I cut out so much of the movie because it drags on. I cut out a whole underplot of Adam being engaged to a, an annoyingly neurotic Jewish woman, jokes about poop and vaginal reconstructive surgeries, ripping out the rectum of animals, cause fun times? There's a shockingly long scene of them playing bridge and Adam having to break down the results in him humping pool animals. And then eventually falling in love with his Mongolian counselor. And I'm being very specific about her being Mongolian cause it comes up over and over again cause racism. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't consider myself a trailblazer in PC comedy. Again, I've laughed at some really messed up stuff. <laughs> Even recently, there was this funeral home. There ended up being an investigation after it got shut down that showed that they had kept a bunch of dead infants in the uh, in the ceiling. When my mom told me that, my knee-jerk reaction was to laugh. Not because it's funny, but because it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> she told me that and she was just disturbed. And I started laughing and then the more disturbed she got, the more I started laughing. <laughs> And I couldn't turn it off. It got to the point that I was like, <laughs> I was in literal tears. And my mom was like, what is wrong with her? I was like, I'm so sorry. That's not because I think it's funny. It's not because I think it's funny. I'm crying again just thinking about it. It's not because I think it's funny. It's because what? The only part of this movie that was somewhat funny, the like 30 seconds they had a Jamaican doctor coming in to sedate him for his... Uh, circumcision and she starts singing a song and that shit made me laugh that is it not even laugh it made me like oh uh, okay that was kind of funny the boy came with his big knife i thought he was going to take my life but he only took a little bit off the top but yeah that's that's the most they got from me. Needless to say, I do not find this movie funny or even want to recommend it. Even as like a it's so bad, it's good movie, cause it's not even that. Yeah, this movie is remarkably bad in a way that I can't even give really any witty commentary on it. But hey, it was still fun to go along for the ride, I hesitate to say. I don't know, this is garbage. It's, this whole video is a bust. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. And I'll see you guys I guess next Tuesday. I'm supposed to upload on Saturdays and Tuesdays, but we get videos out is what I'm saying. I'll be around, I'm here. Follow me on Twitch. I've been updating way too much there, honestly. Probably why I haven't been uploading that second video a week because I'm on there way too much. Speaking of which, I'm still trying to get my hands on a Switch. If someone wants to like give baby girl a Switch, no, I'm joking. Or am I, like seriously, if someone, like I can't find it. Someone give me a Switch. I wanna play Animal Crossing. I wanna, I wanna see what's so great about it. Anyway, I'm rambling. See you guys next time.